Well, hey, and welcome to another Quad Cortex Quick Tips video. Today, I want to discuss input levels and output levels. So let's get started. So if you're new to the Quad Cortex, this should basically be step one, setting your input level. So how we do that, it's our basic screen here. We're going to swipe down from the top, and we're going to click on our input one. That's where my guitar is plugged in. If yours is plugged in on input two, then obviously you're going to select input two. But input one, that's the one I'm going with. And then we're presented with this screen where we get the in one level, and then we get a little VU meter. Um, we have an impedance. We have a type, whether it be mic or instrument. Mine is set to instrument. If you have it set to mic, you can also select phantom power. Um, it's grayed out by default for instrument. And then you have a ground lift on the far right. So input levels, it's pretty easy to kind of dial it in. My best advice is take the guitar you're going to use the most or the loudest guitar that you have and set the input level so that the meter is just touching the red every once in a while. So if I strum a hard G chord, you can see how... Every once in a while, it's kind of touching the red, but during normal playing... It is basically in the green the whole time. So that is a quick and dirty way. Obviously, you can see here I've got mine set to 4.7 dB. Um, I can't remember what the out-of-the-box setting is, but probably zero at Unity. Um, but yeah, mine is a 4.7 dB boost on the particular guitars that I play, which happen to be Telecasters or Telecaster-style guitars. Um, when it comes to impedance, you're pretty much going to leave it at the 1M, 1M impedance. You can adjust this but it's going to basically adjust your sound. You're going to notice that you're going to lose some of the characteristics of the sound of the guitar in terms of the um, higher frequencies and stuff like that. So as a basic rule of thumb, I just keep it at one. Um, just as a fun side note here, if we go to input one, and if I dump that to zero, and I take my pedal off here, you can notice right away that the amplifier sounds different. <laughs> And then if I put that back up to 4.7 where I had it before, you can see that my guitar is basically hitting the amp harder. And that makes sense because I'm adding 4.7 dB more volume than factory setting was on the Quad Cortex. So again, very important to set this up because your presets will sound drastically different if you don't have this set up properly. All right, so obviously we have our input level set. The other stuff we're going to pay attention to before we go to the output side is the actual um, blocks that we have in our chain. So as you can see here, I've got a couple different amplifiers. I've got an IR and then I'll have my output um, down here at the multi-out. So let's talk quickly. Um, on my input side, all I have is a noise reduction. That's not going to do anything to your overall input level coming into the blocks. Um, that just basically reduces any extraneous noise. If you turn that off, you can notice sometimes in noisy environments, um, you'll get some artifacts and stuff like that that are not very pleasing when you're not actually playing guitar. So I usually have my noise reduction set to about 30%. And then let's take a look at our amplifier. So I'm using a capture right now, and basically the thing I've noticed about captures is they're very much all over the place, whether it be a capture of a pedal or a capture of an amplifier. Um, they're very sporadic, and I generally find myself either having to clean it up by bringing down this overall volume because it's clipping or very, very hot a signal coming into my interface, or um, conversely, I'll have to boost this because I'm taking off gain just from my own personal preferences, that sort of thing. So first rule of thumb before you have anything else on the grid is basically take a look at your amplifier and your cabinet and just have a dry signal essentially. Um, I'll even turn this stuff off just so you guys can kind of see how they affect things once you add them in. That's just reverb and delay and compressor. But this is just basically an amplifier and an IR or a cabinet um, and that's what this sounds like here. So if I reference my VU meter that I have on my interface that I'm using, I'm basically seeing that I'm hitting about minus three basically all the time. Now, a couple things to keep in mind. You can obviously take the, or put the Quad Cortex into a digital audio um, workspace and you can look at the levels um, as they're coming into your DAW to kind of set 
different levels for presets depending on how loud or how soft you want them to be. Keeping in mind that if you're going to add any pedals, um, if you want a boost for your solos, you're going to want to have a little bit of a buffer so that you're not actually clipping into the red on the VU meter because if you start to clip during your solos, nine times out of ten the sound guy isn't going to be able to re react quick enough anyway if you're playing live and you're just going to have kind of a distorted crappy sound. So you want to keep a little bit of headroom if you want to have a solo boost in your chain. That's how I essentially approach that. And then obviously if we add in like a compressor and stuff like that, you can see uh, depending on how you have it set, I basically use the dual compressor um, for most of my presets and then I just basically adjust the compress um, the compressor side of things. I don't touch the mix normally. Uh, if anything, I'll turn it down to maybe 80%. But as you can see, it's at 100% and it sounds. And that actually cut down some of my volume. So now I'm basically around minus six to minus nine. So it's a little bit quieter because of the compressor that I have added in there. So that's something to consider as well. And then I add in my first pedal. And just for fun, I'll add in my reverb and my delay as well. So my first pedal here, um, I got a pitch shifter that won't do anything to the level. But I'll add in another capture that I have, which is a clone. And as you can see, on this particular capture, I've dumped minus 5.8 dB off that because I wanted to basically have the same volume um, without the pedal as with the pedal. Um, I just wanted the pedal to add a nice kind of overdriven sound. If I take that off, I have that. So they're pretty similar. And again, I just basically, I'll turn up my studio monitors and I'll just basically match that by ear and then I can make little tweaks here and there. But essentially, I'm keeping the same amount of signal coming into my interface at all times. Um, again, because I'm going to add a solo boost and I want to be able to have a little bit of extra headroom for that. So last thing to look at on this page, your multi out here. So this basically is a little bit different than the overall output that you have um, that just control your, your XLR outputs or your quarter inch outputs. This is basically within the preset itself. So if you have um, any sort of uh, decibels added here, you're gonna notice that on the output side. So again, if we look at this meter, I'm in stereo right now. And I could probably even increase that a little bit more, but because I like where it's sitting uh, with regards to the VU meter on my interface, um, I'm gonna leave that right there. So I'm not into the red at all, I'm just basically all in the green, the higher end of the green, and that's totally fine. Obviously, um, as you can see here, you can change this for different scenes that you have set up. You can also just mute it outright. Um, or you can solo it if you have more than one lane going, or sorry, row going to those same outputs. All right, so finally, let's take a look at our output section on the global menu here. So if we, again, we swipe down, and I'm on input one now, and I'm going to go over to my XLR outputs. So now we're greeted with out one level, out two level, and we have some other parameters, so let's talk about them really quickly. So your output one level and output two level correspond directly to um, the XLR out one left and out two right in the back of the unit. So um, usually I leave these alone. In the past, I've probably put about three dB more gain uh, what they give you out of the box, which is zero, which is unity. Um, just again, because of how I want it to come into my interface, um, when I'm recording and doing stuff like that. So if I boosted 3 dB, you can obviously notice there's a difference. And again, you notice those meters here, they're not going into the red. If they do touch the red every once in a while, that is totally fine. The ground lifts, you would only use if you're having sort of a ground loop problem, you'd be able to hear that and notice that. And you can throw these on and take them off as you need. I generally always have them set to off. Mute, um, just very self-explanatory. If you wanted to mute one side or the other, you can do that, and then it grays out the entire line there. All right, so that's the basics of inputs and output gain on the Quad Cortex. Again, if you're new to the unit, this should be one of the first things you do even before building your first preset. You definitely wanna set that input gain and get your guitar optimized 
uh, for the quad cortex in terms of the input level that is coming into the unit itself. It will make your life a lot easier. So if you found this video helpful, please hit that subscribe button and hit that bell notification icon so you never miss another video. I have a bunch more quick tips videos for the quad cortex in particular coming out. If you have any other questions, please drop them in the comments. I try my best to respond to all of them. And as always, thank you very much for watching.